today we're looking at a food related toy that has been around for a very long time that can sell for some monstrous money. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to talk about a food-related toy that has been around since the 50s. It's something that is highly collectible and one of the first things that were sold on eBay. Today we are talking about Pez. So here's a couple examples of vintage ones. These are the original ones. These have no feet on the bottom. The newer ones have a foot, so they stand up. It actually looks like little feet on the bottom, real feet. That is the difference on these. These are the ones that I always look for. The country of manufacture is also important on these as well, as are some of the numbering on them. Usually the older ones are going to be worth the most money or some that are variations or varieties. Sometimes one little tiny difference in one of these can mean the difference between a $20 Pez and a couple hundred dollar Pez as well. So without further ado, let's hop over and look at some of the massive values that vintage Pez can sell for. Now, Pez can sell anywhere from a couple bucks to thousands of dollars for a used Pez. It just depends on the variety and the markings on them. The patent numbers usually determine the actual age. Certain patent numbers were issued at certain times, and when Pez changed something on it, the patent number changed to actually compensate. Or there may be a newer patent number as well as an older patent number on them also. You can look up most of them online for free. There are sites that just deal in Pez. One of the very first things ever sold on eBay was Pez. One of the founders of eBay was a Pez collector, from my understanding, also. Now, there are some earlier first-year designs that go for some phenomenal money, like this one here. This is not a one-off. Other of these have sold on eBay for some phenomenal money as well. This one did sell legitimate sale for well over $2,200. This is a Red Lion Pez. Most of the good ones are going to be marked Austria. So that is a name you need to look for. And that will be marked on the side of the Pez itself too, on the red section. Now the more odd or unique the Pez is, the more it will be worth. This one's listed as a totem Pez. It is round. It is not squared off or rectangle like most of the ones you see. This one went for $1,579. Now, someone may miss this item, assuming it's not a Pez, because it's not marked that way. Regardless, you can see what this sold for with multiple bids. Now, most people that I know do not know Pez very well at all. One of the biggest misconceptions is that the known characters like Batman, Superman, horror movies, and things like that are the ones you want. Many of the earlier ones or the most expensive ones are very common, very generic looking, like this pony or horse right here. It's a cute one. It's an early one. It's an original one. Has no feet. The whole works. So this is one of those that you're going to have to be aware of. All of these sorts of animals go for some phenomenal money if they're from the right era, if they're marked correctly like this Austria one here. Now, as I said, variations do extremely well. Now, these are translucent. These actually look like lighters for the most part. And that's why I believe they didn't make many of these because these were easily confused with lighters. An old Bic may be confused with this. They're similar in size and shape. This is limited. They didn't make a ton of these. All of these translucent ones can sell for a few hundred dollars or more each. This is a lot of three of them, and they went for 1175 bucks. Now, here's another interesting example. Sometimes a company had some made custom for them. Maybe they were handouts. Maybe they were actually from some of the toy fairs and toy shows, even going back to the original time frame. They would run some just to advertise in many cases. Those are scarce because they don't match the normally released version of that Pez. This one went for close to $1,000 because this is one of those custom variations that seldom shows up. Here's a great example of variations. These are 11 different Zorro ones here. Each one is different in some way, whether it's a marking, a size, uh, the actual image itself, the design. Maybe there could be a little different coloring on a cheek or something like that. Each one of these is different. That's why this lot went for 950 bucks. This person tracked down all the variants. One of the variants could be worth all the money as well, too, in some cases on some of these. Not everyone has a variation either, so keep that in mind. Knowing the difference, knowing the right ones can do you phenomenal nominally well. Again, there are price guides. There are price guide sites out there, identification sites and the whole works that tell you every detail.
detail you need. So you really don't even need to spend any money to be able to search these and sort these down by era, value, and the whole works. They also made some in shapes. This is designed to look like a ray gun. When you pull the trigger, a Pez comes flying out. They can be disassembled. You can see all the pieces here. It's in nice condition. Now, this is one also that people may not realize is a Pez because they're not used to seeing shapes, designs, and styles like this. Now, as I said earlier, some are made custom for very specific places or events. This is for a country club here, and it was limited to 450 of these. This is a newer one, too, I believe from like the 2000s. So this one's still a high price one, 640 bucks. They'll still show up. If you don't know that about some of these, you'll walk right by them or just assume it's a normal, everyday Pez. There are a bunch of these sorts as well. There's box sets. There's limited edition ones. They've made them for Walking Dead and all sorts of TV shows these days, Star Wars. They come in different sizes and the whole works. There's a whole world around Pez that most people are unaware of. Now, many of these they've made for years. This is an original one, a psychedelic vintage 1960s one. There are new recreations or newer versions of this that aren't worth anywhere near this kind of money. It just depends on the version you have when it was made. So I said some of these could have been made 20 years or more. So just pay attention. Be aware of that when you're out searching. The numbers, the feet, all that sort of thing means a huge difference in these. If you don't know that, you could really do some damage to yourself. You could be investing too much in some of these and not realize that they're new ones, modern ones, or reproductions. Now, there are some characters that do phenomenally well. Universal monsters always do well in almost any line of toy, game, book, poster book, or anything, including Pez. This is Frankenstein. There are different versions of these. The skin color may be different. The scar may be a little different. The numbering or markings on them may be different as well. You can see the price this one went for almost $400 for this Pez. Here's another one, the Creature from the Black Lagoon. Now, it may say Gill Man, Gill Monster, something like that, but it's all the same thing. These all go for any of those, Dracula, the Mummy, any of those can go for some phenomenal money. There's many variations on those as well, so make sure you know which one you're listing. You don't want to misidentify these and offer something that you don't really have. Now, just like the gun, there are other dispensers that are shaped. There's a semi-truck. There's some vehicles. This is a robot here. There are a couple of different versions of these also in different colors. They're all worth good money. As you can see here, 396 bucks. Now, if you're not paying attention, you're not aware of what this is, you might just think it's some cheapo toy and walk right by it. These all sell for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Now, here's another example. This is a rare Santa Claus. This is an early 50s one, and you can clearly tell by the looks of this. It looks old. The plastic's different. Construction alone is different on these. All of these sorts can go for some pretty good money. So you may run into one of these. You may look past it and not assume that it's a Pez if you don't know they have these figural ones also. Now here's another one. This is the Ringmaster. And he actually comes with a cardboard body. It's just basically a normal footless Pez, but the body is there with them as well. It was sold packaged with them together. There's other ones of these as well, so it's something else to look for. Having the cardboard piece adds to the value because that's one of the first things usually lost damaged or destroyed. Most people save the dispenser so they can refill it back up, but the cardboard will get damaged in your pocket. That's why this one sold for over 600 bucks. Now the actual candy itself, vintage, unedible, will still sell. If you can find a vintage box like this one here, you can get some pretty darn good money. This sold for almost 300 bucks, And all it is is Pez inside the package here. You can see the wear. You can see this is old. You can see as well that this is from England. It has the 3D, which is their value on them. So again, even these will go for some phenomenal money. Now here's another example. These are from the 50s these are what you would find here in this country different varieties it has the flavor on it too now one pack of these candy pez here sold for 250 bucks so you don't even have to have the dispenser even the packaging without the pez unit in it can still sell for some phenomenal money most of the packaging from the 50s and 60s has long since been lost. The child opened it up and discarded it immediately and messed with the candy and started eating it. That's why if you just find a package or anything like that, you can find some phenomenal value out of those. Sometimes the packaging can be worth more than the Pez unit itself. 
And along the lines of the packaging are the dispensers you would buy some of the candy itself. This is a dispenser for the actual Pez candy. They would be lined up on each side of this. It would hang from down in front of the counter. And on top of the counter, you'd see the Pez dispensers themselves. So that way you can buy extra candy immediately right there while you're buying it. This is a point of purchase display. It's one of those last minute, hey, I better buy some of these things. These do show up. There's more than just this one up on eBay. There was quite a few when I looked. These sell for eight, nine hundred dollars in not so great condition. This one's in excellent condition here. This one sold for almost fourteen hundred dollars. Any hardcore Pez collector will want this without a doubt. Sometimes you can run into some of these where all the labels and pricing are gone, where you can't tell what it's for. So be aware of what this looks like, the design and the construction. Well, there we have it. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoy this video please hit that like button down below you can also hit the bell icon to be notified if i post new content or go live subscribe and tell all your friends Shots, good and hot tongue teas and candy that's sure to give your taste a bang. It's a fire treat that's fun to eat. Just pull the fuse, pop them in your mouth, and take off for fun. What candy? We love